Now we have to decide, are these the same molecule or different molecules? different molecules. I think what you're thinking is they have the same elements, but that doesn't mean that they're the same molecule. They could be isomers of each other. So the point is, isomers are not the same molecule. Um, they're different molecules. Okay. Um, these are different. Um, another way to put it is, there's no way you could rotate this molecule to make it look like this picture. So they must be different. Uh, remember the example of my hand. Here's a picture of my hand. Here's another picture of my hand. Are those two different hands or the same hand? They're the same hand because you can rotate one hand so it looks like the other one. Um, but these can't be rotated so they look like the other one. Uh, the word that's often used there is superimposable. That might have been in the book. If you can rotate one of these so you can superimpose it on the other, then they're really identical. And if you can't rotate one so they superimpose, they're not identical. But I don't really quite see why we need the word superimposable because if you can rotate one of them so you can superimpose it on the other, that means you can rotate one so it looks like the other. Um, so all that superimposable means is that you can rotate a picture so it looks identical to the other picture, and then they would be identical molecules. All right, well, there's no way we can rotate these so they would look the same. Um, what type of isomers do we have here? Um, no. Yeah, it is geometric isomers? Yeah. Yeah, geometric. So they're not linkage isomers. Those would be structural isomers that are different connectivity. But does it make sense? These have the same connectivity. For example, this platinum is connected to two chlorines and two ammonias. And this platinum is also connected to two chlorines and two ammonias. So these have the same connectivity. So they're not structural isomers. They have the same connectivity, but different arrangements in space. Are these geometric isomers? Yes. Yeah, they are cis trans. Which one would this be? Cis. Yeah. In this case, the two chlorines are close to each other kind of on the same side of the molecule, it's, I think, easier to see that this is trans. In this case, the two chlorines are directly across from each other. It might help to think about the angles, the bond angles. What do you think is the bond angle from the chlorine to the platinum and back out to this chlorine? 90. 90. It's not drawn as 90 on the board, but that's because of the, the three-dimensional perspective issues. Uh, and you could really look at this um, in, uh, well, uh, so this really is a 90-degree angle. But what's the bond angle from this chlorine to this platinum to this chlorine? 180. 180, which would be typical of trans when they're across from each other. Okay, so this really is cis or trans. So these are two different things. So what would the, is this something where we would use that DXY thing? No. No. <laughs> yeah, no. So uh, you, you mean like the, uh, the DXY, the DYZ, the yeah. DZ squared? Yeah. So those would be um, the, the D orbitals. That's the crystal field field theory, which is separate from stereoisomerism. So those are the, big, the two big hard topics in this chapter, stereoisomerism and crystal field. You don't have to think about the D orbitals at all, though, for stereoisomerism. The D orbitals have nothing to do with the stereoisomerism. That's just for the crystal field theory. Um, the D orbitals are what are going to hold the lone pairs. But remember, we're not taking into account the lone pairs in the geometry. We're just taking into account where the lichens are. So we're not going to have to worry about the lone pairs here. OK. Um, all right. So um, although in, in a way, the crystal field theory a little bit builds on this geometry. So it's good to talk about this first. Now, let's look at this picture. What's the relationship between these two pictures? Are they isomers or are they identical? Yeah, they are identical. They don't look the same, but you could rotate one of them so they look like the other. How can we do that? Well, does it make sense that um, the problem here is that here we have a chlorine and here we have an ammonia. So they don't look identical yet. But suppose that I rotated this entire thing 90 degrees. 
If I rotated this whole picture 90 degrees, wouldn't this chlorine then be in the right position to, to superimpose on this? And this ammonia would be in the right position to superimpose on this if I rotated it 90 degrees. And if I rotate this 90 degrees, this chlorine would be in the right position to superimpose on this. So these really are superimposable to each other. Even though they didn't look the same, we can see that we could rotate one picture so it would look like the other. Just like you could rotate this picture of my hand so it looks like this picture of my hand. So we decided, are these isomers or identical? Yeah, these are identical. They're not isomers. They're just two different pictures of the same thing. All right, well, this was an example of the, the skill that we need, which is to be able to rotate one picture and see whether it's the same as something else. Uh, now, I started you off with a really easy example. Unfortunately, as you go on, they get harder, but this is the basic skill. Now, the key thing here is not to try to do this in your head, but actually physically write down what this would look like after it rotates, because oftentimes people think that they can rotate one picture to look like the other one, and they don't realize that they still won't match up. Well, the best way to do it is actually to draw the new picture of what they look like after they rotate, and then you can tell. I actually didn't quite follow that advice here, but if you did rotate this picture, it would look exactly like this. What about these two pictures? Are they isomers or identical? Yeah, they're isomers. What type of isomers? Yeah, geometric isomers. Is there any way I could rotate this picture to look like this? Well, no. There, no rotation is going to change this from a 180 bond angle to a 90 degree bond angle. Looking at the bond angle here is helpful, I think, for thinking about this. This is cis, because we have a 90 degree bond angle between the chlorines. And this is trans, because we have a 180 degree bond angle between the chlorines. Well, no rotation is going to change the bond angle. So that would be the fastest way to see these are not identical. So that's one useful thing about thinking about the bond angles. Maybe it, it makes us so that we don't have to do as much rotation. We could see that these pictures were likely to be the same because in both cases we had 180 degree bond angles. So there was a good chance we could rotate one to look like the other. Okay, now the last type and maybe the most confusing type of stereoisomers is the optical isomers. Right, well, when we're rotating these, we're not changing the bond angles. We should think of these rotating these as rigid structures. If you rotate it as oh, a rigid structure, okay. the bond angle can't change. Okay. It's just like, um, I, don't, I don't know, like if I rotate, so in this case, my pinky is next to my ring finger. And if I rotate it, my pinky is still next to my ring finger. Rotating it doesn't change the relationship between those two fingers. Oh, okay. It just changes where they are in the picture. Okay. So we should be imagined rotating these as rigid structures. What, what we're not doing is we can't break bonds and form new bonds. For example, I can't just detach this chlorine and this ammonia and have them switch page places. That wouldn't be rotation anymore. That would be breaking, changing the connectivity. Okay. This is a little bit easier. Uh, if you take a little OCHEM, one thing you do in OCHEM is you're given a model kit and you make little models of um, uh, the molecules by, uh, you have little um, beads and you stick little pegs in between them. Um, well, changing the connectivity is like if you take the pegs out of the holes and you put them in the different holes. Um, whereas rotation would just be rotating the model without pulling any of the pegs out of the holes. So what we're talking about here is just rotating without pulling the pegs out of the holes. Um, rotating the molecule without breaking any of the bonds. If you can rotate the molecule without breaking the bonds, then um, they're the really, uh, and get the same picture, then they're the same molecule. Okay, but we know that it's not, I mean, we know that is an optical isomer, I mean not optical, sorry, uh, well because that's a 90 degree and that's a 180, Right. so we know we can't change that, right? I mean, we can't change that, we can't change the bond angle by rotating the molecule. Okay. You can't change the bond angle by rotating the molecule. Okay. Um, one thing that might be confusing is that I used the term 90 degrees here in two different ways. One thing I said is that there is a 90 degree angle between this chlorine and this chlorine. And I also said that I rotated this molecule 90 degrees. But those are two completely unrelated uses of the word 90 degrees. Um, I rotated this 90 degrees, but the bond angle between the chlorines remained 180 degrees in this picture. Rotating this doesn't change the bond angle. Okay. okay. 
as you can see, after you rotate this 90 degrees, it looks like this, and there's still a 180 degree bond angle. 